Well, welcome everyone. There's lots of seats up in the front, so for those of you who, who think you're needed to hold up the back wall, you're not. <laughs> so these are our new digs. Uh, how many of you have been here to one of our annual meetings before? Show hands. Okay, so we, we were renting space at UCAR for our annual meetings. So now that we have these new digs, this saves us a bit of money. A little over 10K, so that I think that's good. So there may be the odd bug in working this all out because this is new. There was certainly was the first time we used the UCAR facilities. Um, so what else do I want to say on the facilities? I do think that um, this is a giant building. It's the largest ICU. It's uh, 250,000 square feet. Plus we have an attached lab building, which is probably another 100, 120,000 square feet. So it's easy to get lost. So if you get lost, um, we have food scattered around. <laughs> And there are washrooms. Okay. Um, so I'm going. To, this is not a keynote address. This is just sort of giving the updates for the meeting. Um, and but I do want to provide some updates on the program CSDMS. These are the eight functions that we work on on a regular basis, both as a community, that means all of you, and uh, those of us who are here at, in Boulder at the integration facility. And I'm going to walk you through a few of the things that we've done in the last few months. First off, on top, in terms of the community effort, over the last year we have 100 new members, so we continue to grow, and even though this is no longer a focus of ours to grow the community, it grows on its own. Um, and uh, we have some new chairs, uh, Tom Su, uh, Chair of Cyber uh, Informatics and Numerics, the working group, Way Low uh, on the Education and Knowledge Transfer working group, <coughs> then Kat Lakshmi, uh, co-sponsored by Colossi on the Hydrology Focused Research Group. Chris Jenkins joins as co-chair of the Carbonate Focused Research Group. And uh, Nicole Gasparini joins us as chair of the Terrestrial Working Group. So if you're in the audience, can you stand up so people see, can see who you are? Okay. There you are. Those are your new chairs. Thank you. And we have two members of our steering committee. This is the group that provides us with advice, works with the interagency folks and the industrial uh, leaders that are part of our uh, funding efforts. And we have Effie Papupula Giorgio, who I don't think is here right now. Oh. Effie's there, yay! <laughs> Effie and David Moore, where's David? There you go. So let's welcome them to you. So on to uh, even more important news. Uh, after 10 years, uh, you're going to lose me as your executive director, and I'm going to sit under a Bodhi tree and meditate. Um, and we have a new uh, director. Um, he's, he, right now he has the title of deputy director, and soon that will, or shadow director, I like that, it's like Darth Vader. Uh, and he will, Greg Tucker will work with me over the next uh, year, uh, learning the ropes and getting introduced to all the right people, and most importantly, leading the effort, and so you're going to see a lot of him at this meeting for the Systems 3.0 proposal to NSF. Greg has stellar credentials out of Brown University and Penn State, on to MIT, and then he was a lecturer at Oxford University before CU stole him series to, uh, to come to Boulder. He's an award-winning uh, in a number of um, societies and at the university, and I think he will be a terrific leader. So let's give Greg Tucker a warm welcome.
So I'm also happy as much that we've got, besides Greg uh, on our team, we have Lynn and McCready. Those of you who don't know Lynn, she's outstanding and she's uh, manning and running this uh, affair for us. And then uh, as our executive assistant, and then we've taken on two uh, through uh, NSF. Uh, Related NSF funding, we've taken on two software engineers, Mariella Perno and uh, Elgin uh, Jack Roth. So, uh, Mariella and uh, Elgin, you're here someplace. There you are, Elgin, and Mariella's in the back. She ran the um, uh, boot camp with Mark. Um, but anyways, I am so pleased at every single one of these individuals. They're outstanding. I don't know how I was so lucky over the last... 10 years to be working with them, that's wonderful. So, on the, it's really important, so I ask you and to work with your colleagues and friends to participate when this all gets settled. We've been working with the American Geophysical Union to have a big presence this year at uh, AGU San Francisco. We have 11 uh, sessions um, proposed. As you know, sometimes they get merged together. But in that, I'm a personal friend of the person who organizes AGU uh, sessions. Hopefully, we'll get our way on some of this. So I think this is uh, a terrific opportunity. So if you have posters at this particular meeting, you may want to turn them into talks or other posters at the AGU. Uh, please participate. Almost all of the uh, focus research groups and working groups have a presence uh, through one of these proposed sessions. So another thing we've stopped counting, although we should count every other year, is that you know we now have over 500 plus institutions as part of CSD that's scattered around the world. Uh, they're both representing uh, academic universities or knowledge institutes, uh, government agencies, and industry. Uh, our members are now coming from 68 countries, and um, again, we don't track this as carefully as we should. Um, Albert Kettner um, makes sure that this is legitimate and that we don't have cyber spies on our computer. And he rids them for us. But anyways, these are the numbers in our groups uh, most recently, and you can see that this is an organization that continues to grow. We're also reaching out to the International Soil Modeling Consortium. So it's dedicated to soil science, dedicated to open source. Yeah, it has an American presence, although it's more Euro European-based in membership. Um, lots of models that could uh, be contributed to and, and shared with our community. So we're working with them to see if that can work out, perhaps independently of the critical zone, although that's our own one. Our critical zone, which includes soil science, is not as dedicated and much more broader. And ecosystem dynamics, you know, uh, that's one of the new ones that we launched uh, last year. Um, and already it's grown, and uh, Greg and I attended the International Society for Ecological Modeling Conference uh, last week in Baltimore. Great organization to work with, um, and we look forward to working with them uh, through this uh, shared uh, uh, focus research group. The Human Dimensions, there's a few of you who are staying on for this conference next week. Uh, that's trying to link our system models, uh, our sort of a community kind of models with the social science models. I think this will really put some emphasis uh, behind the human dimension uh, focus research. Um, we continue to get your donated models. Thank you very much. Uh, both in coastal, marine, terrestrial, and hydrological communities, we now have 259 models and modeling tools. Um, we have enough of them that I'm not familiar with all of them, so I can't talk about them. But certainly when we get them, we compile them so we know they work. Um, uh, we just don't know what they do. So um, most of them are in the language that allows them to be wrapped and put into our planetary environment. Uh, so um, 90, I think 92% of them are in 
one of these um, languages that we support. But even though that is right now the technology, we are uh, thinking about and trying to work out how we can best work on trying to extend this plug and play technology. For instance, the agent based models. There's some open source uh, programs out there, uh, compilers out there, I should say, that may allow this, even though our new language neutral compiler battle doesn't support that at present. Beach is still up and running. A lot of you thought it would be dead by now, but uh, the systems community is still heavily engaged in working with this. We had to re move it to a new location. Um, and uh, Janus is still up and running, even though it's now past its life. And so uh, NSF has supported us. I'm one of the PEIs on this new program summit. So I'm connected to all of them. Um, and so Summit will be coming online. It's half the teraflop, a petaflop, I should say. And that will be available to those who can show that they can scale their models. And uh, the, your bona fides can be made on Beach, and if you're capable, on Janus and then Summit. But we also work carefully with uh, Yellowstone up the road. It's an NSF facility that's a couple of petaflops. And... Um, we're trying to get our software stack on other systems. Um, we reach out to you every year, and we continue to reach out to you to submit to this online service that we provide. You'll get credit, but it offers a place for you to develop uh, sort of cyber numerical labs, uh, short courses, lectures, textbooks, um, even data. Uh, your movies on our system's YouTube channel, and we talked about last year Science on a Sphere, so we put up ourselves uh, more of our data sets and model simulations on the Science on the Sphere, sphere that gets out to the international community and the museums and really gets into the public domain. Um, so please help us. Um, also, our uncertainty volume that Albert Kendner deserves all the credit for as uh, the lead editor. Uh, that uh, is now out. It's available on uncertainty uh, from uh, our annual meeting a couple of years, two, three years ago. I think. So, um, we're happy to announce that Systems uh, 1.0, the web modeling tool, uh, is out. It's battle hardened. That was our big deal was to convert it from our proof of concept uh, CMT tool uh, that was not battle hardened to battle hardened code, operational grade code, and that's available for all of you to use. And we've also, for those of you who don't like using GUIs, we have a behind the scene. We've had it forever, but we've just never shared it, but now we're sharing it. It's the system's uh, Python modeling tool, and that's also available for all of you. Um, see Eric Hutton for that. We have Anaconda-based uh, binary software distributors available for all of our software code. We have software stack installers. We tried this out most recently at Louisiana State University's High Performance Computer, and we're willing to work with you and your HPCs to get our software stack there if you needed it. Otherwise, you're, uh, we're happy to support you through our own systems through the web. And uh, we have worked on getting all the components of top of flow in WMT. That's completed now. And we have a clinic coming up this uh, meeting. Uh, we wanted to use top of flow because even though Scott was the author of this, Scott Peckham, uh, it wasn't quite into the, the BMI standards that we now have. And so it, it provided us with challenges that we were able to overcome. So we're pleased to say that that's now all those components are available in WMT. Um, Scott has continued to work on our semantic mediation and ontologies, and he now has 2653 system standard names. Remember, when you have two codes that want to talk to one another, they have to agree what something is called. And they do, do, they do that through a shared naming uh, system. And that allows um, 
doesn't matter what this code calls it, or it doesn't matter what that code calls it, but by having this shared thing, the models can communicate through our uh, model coupling program. Dakota, we still work on when we can to get this into WMT. We have a prototype now up and available. We have got Dakota Python wrappers available. And we have a new benchmarking toolkit called ILAM. And um, Elchin is the master of that, so please talk to Elchin. So this is our meeting. So our meeting is, even though uh, many of you appear to have been here before, we run the meeting more or less the same. Different keynote addresses, of course, and clinics, of course, and discussions, of course, uh, and posters and all of that, but the meeting schedule is more or less fixed. Uh, we start with some keynotes, as soon as I wind up, uh, we'll get on to... Uh, we need all your thoughts on Systems 3.0. What is it that you would like the, this as a community effort to meet your needs in the uh, 21st century through Systems 3.0? We have clinics. So after lunch, go directly to the clinics. Um, Greg, we're going to come back here after, after the... So after the keynotes... There must be a break. Is there a break? Yes. So, um, so after the break, come back here because Greg would like to uh, um, encourage you all and give you some ideas on what the breakouts will be for the Systems 3.0. But after lunch, go directly to the clinics. The rooms are there. Then we'll have more keynotes, posters, and start the day fresh the next day. Um, we have a wide variety of clinics. Um, they're outstanding. I look forward to them. And uh, we will have group meetings, discussions that will largely be on medium and long-term goals in System 3.0 also. So, uh, the banquet is a fun banquet. It's on Wednesday night. Uh, it's at the Hyatt Regency where some of you are staying and there'll be buses or transportation to get you there. Um, correct, Lynn? Yes. Okay. And, and so this is an opportunity for us to award a prize to the best poster. And so to get the best poster, you just don't want me voting. So uh, everyone should vote. And remember, vote often. I shouldn't say that. Don't vote often. This is not a Republican. Oh, did I say that for Joe? <laughs> so, uh, we will also have, uh, have an award uh, go out to our um, uh, student model of the year. I'd uh, like to, uh, I mean, that's a wonderful opportunity to give us a highly competitive award. And then we're going to move on to the Program Director's Award. Um, Many of you don't know Joe. Some of you do. Joe's one of the most outstanding people I've ever come across. Um, he's, he took a program that was the predecessor to uh, systems, uh, CSDMS, and it was called Stratiform. And he led that when he was program director at the Austin Naval Research. What made uh, Stratiform outstanding is that it was based on the three pillars of modern day science in our environmental field, it's built on the uh, process based studies because you need them. Always learn new things when you measure things. It's based on the preserved record because you need to interpret and sort of translate between the process studies and the preserved record. And it's also based with numerical modeling being the important glue between those two. And and his effort in this made, made Stratiform one of the most outstanding programs. And so for this and many other programs that he ran, uh, he will be winning the Director's Award this year. And Mary Hill will be winning the Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, many of you know Mary because she's been an outstanding uh, spokesperson, uh, intellect for SAT systems meetings over the last few years. And uh, she's well deserved for this Lifetime Achievement Award. And the, the list of prizes that she's already won is outstanding from her uh, 
awards and authorship of the USGS, uh, the uh, Civil Engineers uh, Walter Hubbard Engineering Research Prize, the National Groundwater Distinguished Darcy Lecturer for Fellowship with the GSA, and the King Hubbard Award, which is probably the most prestigious of all, um, is just one of the reasons. But that's not in itself the reason she's winning the System Lifetime Achievement Award. She's really pioneered open source modeling, and it's because of her that we now have the foundations that we do in some of the great codes that we have. So, and then her work on uncertainty analysis, through all that, I just bow my hands to Mary all the time. So where are you, Mary? Congratulations.